19 matches into the season. We have eight unhappy players on the books. We are hemorrhaging almost £1 million a month. And we've won once in our last seven matches. So perfect time to go away from home to the league leaders. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to Club 2, Part 3 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and you're not going to believe this. Despite all of those difficulties that I just ran through, we are in 10th place. I am even more baffled than you are. Our form immediately after the transfer window concluded was, quite frankly, ludicrous. I plugged in a friendly against a local team to just try to G us up for the fixtures ahead. And September and October were just mind-blowing. Look at this. Six wins, three draws in two months. We got as high as third. We have obviously dropped off a bit of a cliff since then. Things started to take a dip with this 4-0 away defeat at Watford, who were top of the league at the time. They firmly put us in our place, it's fair to say. And then we lost to Huddersfield, Blackburn, managed to draw at QPR, and then lost most shockingly of all, given our form through September and October, to Millwall, who were rock bottom, but managed to pick up a... Pretty lucky 1-0 home victory over Coventry just a couple of days ago. There have been some wonderful performances to shout about this season as well. So Leo on loan has got a fantastic rating playing at the centre of defence. Hinshelwood has been a defensive midfield rock for us. Joshua Williams, who started 12 matches and average value doesn't suggest anything amazing, but he has been solid for us. Don Ballard's recent form has been brilliant, as has Sonny Perkins. The real difficulty that we're facing at the moment, as you can see, is the amount of unhappy players. Now, what I failed to notice on my deadline day spree of signing as many loan players as I possibly could was this little bit of information down here. Maximum of five lone players in match squad. So doesn't matter how many you got, you can only choose five. We have 11, so it's quite tricky to keep them all happy. As a result of that, I have had to juggle things around a bit and occasionally encourage Jamie to pick some of these players who were not getting as much football as they otherwise might have liked. But you can certainly see from the number of appearances these players have made who his favourites are. Ted Kurd, 17 appearances in goal. Sonny Perkins, 13 starts. Hinshelwood, 11. Leo, 10. Ballard, 8. They are the ones who are getting into the team most regularly. And I'm sure you're all very keen to see what the financial situation is. Well, we are still in a positive bank balance at the moment. We've got nearly £2.4 million in the bank. But if you look at our profit and loss each month, oh, it's pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. We've now spent all of our scouting budget, despite restricting it as much as possible. We're spending nearly £30,000 a week over our wage budget, simply because we're relying on so many youngsters who are getting increased wages once they reach a certain amount of games played, that all of their wages are going up. But with January fast approaching, I have seen a glorious transfer rumour. Liverpool supposedly have made Jude Bellingham their primary target. We have a 25% profit sell-on clause. If he goes for £95 million to Liverpool, we'll get about £17.5 million. And because of our much stronger financial position, I have been able to negotiate that we get 30% of transfer revenue. Which could mean, in January... Not only would we be able to actually sort our wage budget out, we might even be able to sign some actual, proper Birmingham City players. Which is something, a few months ago when I joined this club, I genuinely thought might never happen. Another potential windfall imminent as well. Uh, it's the FA Cup third round draw today, and I am really hoping that we get drawn away from home against one of the big Premier League teams. I know that the board expect us to be competitive in this competition. To be honest, all I want is some money from it. And we've been drawn away from home at Luton Town. Great, that feels about right. So it's Tuesday night, the 10th of December. We are away from home against Nottingham Forest, who sit one point clear from Watford at the top of the league. We, against all odds, sitting in 10th place. 
I fear we may start to fall like a stone, but we are 15 points clear of the relegation zone. Hopefully, another 12 or so points would be enough to keep us up. But it's been a while since we watched this team live in action, so uh, glutton for punishment. Let's watch us get absolutely battered by Forrest. So Forrest lining up with a 4-2-3-1. And I suspect we will do the same. Yes, Ballard up front for us. Commentary team saying at the bottom there, it's a tough one to call, but Birmingham will be low on confidence after their recent run of form. Well, I don't think it's a tough one to call at all. Nottingham Forest at home. Surely we're just going to get absolutely destroyed here. But surprisingly, 12 minutes in, we've got most of the possession and Nottingham Forest have scored a goal. Wonderful. Half an hour in, nothing else of note. Nottingham Forest playing the ball back to their defence. And a lofted pass over our right back. Andre Wisdom unable to cut the ball out. And an easy finish there for the Nottingham Forest striker. We have such an inexperienced team. I'm not surprised to see us go away from home to a club like Forest and struggle. We've just been overperforming all expectations this year and amazingly Perkins manages to steal the ball but kicks it straight back to a Forest defender Aurier once more attacking down the right flank back to Yates and another lofted pass we manage to clear once again so we are surviving a period of extended pressure here but the ball when we do manage to get it up front is just not sticking at all I think that Ballard is probably not the most effective front man to have when we're playing that direct style and uh, just goes to show that three goals down in the first half. Jamie has a lot, a lot to do at half time to convince this team that they can actually come back into the match. I always expected this though, there would be matches this season where we would just get absolutely hammered. Remember that most of our team are only League One standard at best at the moment. And because of the situation with the low knees not being able to play all of them at once, we've got a lot of League Two, possibly National League quality players in the team. Oh, another ball over the top. That's four. We look like a League Two team playing out of our depth. It is amazing to believe that only a few matches ago we were on a nine-game unbeaten streak. Certainly doesn't look like it here. We are being absolutely carved open. 4-0 at half-time. Yikes. Well, Jamie, I hope you have some strong words for the team at half-time because we need to do much, much better than that. If we could just not concede in this second half... I would be happy. Interestingly, an early substitution, 53rd minute, we bring Bennett on for Simmons. But Forrester in again, and oh my word, that's five. I think this is now our heaviest defeat of the season. Curd kicking the ball away in frustration. And I do feel for him. We're expecting far, far too much from a League Two standard goalkeeper. Top of the shopping list for January is absolutely going to be a new goalkeeper. We need someone who can the defence can rely on. And a lot of tired players, we have relied on some of these players putting in a lot of game time. Approaching the end of the 90 minutes, we have managed to concede just one in this second half. So that's, that, that is an improvement. Obviously, Forrest will have taken their foot off the gas. But, you know, we got a shot on goal. Bennett came on and got a 6.9. I'm looking for positives here. There aren't many. There aren't many at all. We didn't embarrass ourselves in the second half, I would say. That's something, at least. We dropped to 11th after that match. Now a goal difference of minus 6. But again, 30 points at this stage of the season is so far beyond anything I expected. I have to be very, very proud of the boys. Well, it's nice to see the Birmingham players taking responsibility for what the supporters witnessed against Nottingham Forest. They have paid out over £35,000 to fans who bought tickets to go to the city ground to watch that 5-0 hammering. That's probably not a bad way to get the supporters back on side. The players felt they'd badly let down the travelling support and wanted to pay them back for their loyalty. That is nice to see. 
And we have Bristol City at home next up. They are 8th, we are 11th, and both of us in pretty poor form. But as we know, their squad is probably significantly better than ours, and therefore they are favourites. It does look like Sonny Perkins is confusing myself and Jamie Day, though. He was concerned about the position we've been playing him in, and has changed his mind as he feels we've been doing much better of late. No longer concerned about my tactical decisions. They weren't mine! They were Jamie's. Now only six players at the club who are unhappy. Progress. But is that going to do us any good against Bristol City? Let's find out. Not bad at all. A one-all draw against the team in eighth place in the league. Oh, I say not bad. Devastating. We went ahead in the 15th minute and conceded in the 93rd. It would have been a ridiculous victory. We had an XG of 0.34 versus Bristol City's 1.92. But some good performances again. Fleming has been playing very well this season. Wisdom, Leo, Araujo, Hinshelwood, Bennett having a poor game though. Which is a shame to see because his form this year has actually been pretty decent considering the lad's only 16 years old. 6.83 rating and 6 goals from 12 starts. A lot of pressure on him and he's doing a great job. Oh, more incoming money potentially. Maxime Collin is now one appearance away from making 50 at Socho, which means we'd get £450,000. Next up, we have Ipswich. We're away from home this time. We're in 12th, they are 9th, and they are in exceptional form. 1-4 and drawn one of their last five fixtures. This might be another pasting. Not a pasting, but a fairly comprehensive defeat, sadly. 14 shots against 4, 56% possession versus 44 and a 2-0 defeat, with only Hinshelwood in our starting 11 exceeding a 7 rating. I definitely need to keep an eye out for pacier central defenders in the transfer window, because we've been a victim of the ball over the top so many times this season. That was one, and exactly the same thing happens again, only this time more centrally. Played on side, and an easy finish in the end. Simple direct football that we have had no answer for. We either need Kurd to step out and deal with those or the central defenders to be dropping off and sprinting to catch up, which they clearly did not do. And now poor Ridian Bennett, our 16 year old hero, is jaded and can do with the rest. So we're going to have to rest him now against Swansea, which isn't ideal. They've picked up to 20th and have won three of their last five. Does feel like a bit of a downward spiral is starting. Certainly that Heady heights of third place seem a very long way away now. We definitely need another team meeting ahead of this Swansea game. Encourage the team. That's it. Kofi knows we've been rubbish. Nobody can hide from that fact and it falls on us to sort it out. Yes, yes it does. So let's pump those fists. Yes, we've increased morale a little bit. Not as much as I would have liked. There is a lot riding on this Swansea match because straight after that we've got Forest at home. And we know how things went the last time we played Forest. Unsurprisingly, Swansea favourites again. We're 5 to 2, despite being eight places above them in the league. Well, the board and the fans expect nothing from this. Here's the proof. We've um we've been overperforming significantly so far this season. Our expected goals are the worst in the division. We've scored five more than expected which has given us nine more points. That is why we are currently flying high in mid-table. And this is almost certainly going to run back to the mean. And we're going to be in serious trouble. Loads of passes being made against us in the final third, and we don't have many passes for in the final third. So we've been clinical at taking our chances so far, but we're not creating many, and we're giving a lot away. This does not bode well, come on, Jamie. Gee these boys up. Pull out a miracle result against Swansea. You've done it enough times earlier in the season. I know you can do this. I'm off to eat my Boxing Day turkey, but I'll be following along on live text. Oh my word. <laughs> Looks like all it needed was for Jamie to hear some positive words of encouragement and advice and support and for me to go and eat some turkey. We beat Swansea 2-0. We're up to 34 points. We're in 11th place. 
And we did have more shots on target than the opposition this time, at least. Not a lot of possession. And a lot of good performances. Kurd, Leo, Barmer, Terziev, Wisdom, Piazziti, White, Simmons, Fleming, all seven and above. Ballard probably had a quiet game, got a 6.7 despite scoring, and Hinchel with a rare average performance. I'm delighted with this away from home. First goal was a bit of an oddity. Lots of defensive confusion in the box, but Ballard managed to sneak in to put one away. And then the second one, to be honest, was a, a, a thing of beauty. White taking the ball and playing a gorgeous pass through to Simmons, bursting through from attacking midfield. Great finish from him. And that was 2-0 at 40 minutes. And uh, we didn't look back. We didn't actually create much more at all after that point, looking at the XG table, but we didn't need to. That is great. Border happy. We're sitting in the top half. Supporters are pleased with the league performance as well. Won nine, drawn seven, lost seven. 13 points clear of relegation at the halfway point of the season. That is a sentence I certainly did not expect to be uttering at the end of the previous episode. It's entirely possible it will all go completely catastrophically wrong from this point and uh, we don't win a game for the rest of the season. If any team is capable of doing so, it's probably this Birmingham City one. But with Jude still being Liverpool's major target, it is possible. There's a tiny, tiny sliver of hope that we might actually get some spendable transfer budget in January. It's a lot to ask and we have some big matches coming up before we get there as well. Nottingham Forest at home, top of the league, Hull City away, Cardiff at home, Luton away in the FA Cup, followed by Portsmouth and Bournemouth. It's not entirely unreasonable to think that by the end of January we might have secured 40 plus points and be just about safe from relegation and there's only one way to find out if we achieve that objective come back again soon to watch the next episode so i hope you've enjoyed what you've watched today if you have please drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on to find out the second the next video does drop and in the meantime be excellent to each other i'm kirk sheridan thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon